Um, welcome, Dave. We're here for the follow-up, the summary of the H2 Extra Cup. Um, thank you very much for joining us again. And obviously, you were there on the weekend and you got the chance to uh, participate in some form as well. So great to see you, mate. Yeah, it certainly was. It was an absolute great weekend, as you can see there. We're just letting all the sponsors go through at the moment as we're starting to um to do it but mate it's fantastic to see some old timers you could almost say some of the late 90s early 2000 hq competitors um come back and um jump in some of these cars so it was absolutely brilliant and a big shout out to all the hq competitors that allowed some of the oldies back in yeah, look, it was brilliant. It was an opportunity for us to, A, be able to put a, a race meeting on, which um, was outside of the normal CAMS and Motorsport Australia scenario, and hopefully put sort of something um, back into the sport. We all wanted to race, and we missed sort of getting the chance during the year. So um, to be able to put some sponsors together and be able to put the event together, um, HQ Extra sort of took the lead on this particular um, opportunity, and in, in conjunction with the AMRS, um, we're able to put it together. So... Um, as you can see, our sponsors are there. We've got CR International uh, that helped us out. They were absolutely fantastic, as per usual. Um, we had the Harvey's towing guys uh, that have always helped us with H2 Extra. Um, on this particular side of things, we had Osborne's Transports. Um, they did a, a wonderful job, as they always do, supporting the category, um, keeping the sport sort of running, and not just in New South Wales, but across the board. Um, Asset Plumbing, uh, again, were instrumental in, in HQ Extra. Kerway Asphalting, uh, again, another fantastic sponsor that we've sort of got on board and has been all year. Ready Strip, Mr. Peter Dane himself was um, fortunate enough to, to co-drive with Wayne Healy for the event. Um, they had some troubles, but um, Peter absolutely enjoyed himself immensely and it was great to sort of spend some time with him too. Uh, Hands On First Aid, again, another brilliant supporter that's been involved with HQ Extra all year. Command Digital Signage uh, helped us out with the event as well. And again, a big plug for these guys. They were fantastic to be able to sort of get on board with us too. So um, other than that, HQ Extra and all of our supporters, great for New South Wales to be able to get on board and all the supporters of the category. We had over 20 cars in a limited amount of time to be able to put the event together and it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, it certainly was, Ian. Now, we'll just go back just a little bit here. Um, Peter Dane, yes, you could almost call him Peter Dane Senior, actually. He's been involved with HQs for that long. Uh, Bob Hepburn um, drove with um, Glenn Deering. We had Richard Mork from Ork and also Rob McDougall that um, raced some many, many years ago and done extremely well. It was good to see the One Lungs were back, um, Ian and Brendan One Lung. So they joined up as a father and son team. They done extremely well. Karen Pinkerton. Now, there's a guy that I haven't um, seen in an HQ race car for a fair while. I've seen him at Bathurst because I've got a workshop just down around the corner from Bathurst if anyone gets in trouble, especially next year if the HQs go back there. I'm sure we can keep his workshop full. But good to see Karen Pinkerton. And it's good to see Nicholas Jackson and Scotty Walker there in one of the Type Out cars also come back and, and do this series. Like, not everyone had a teammate. There was a fair few um, guys that were still single in their cars um and there was sort of half a dozen i suppose um that that teamed up with um you know with a senior you could say person but bobby hepburn great to see him back he was doing some pretty good times um he hit a few people that's bobby hepburn and that's the way we love him why change Welcome to round two of the 2020 AMRS and it feels fantastic to be back here at Sydney Motorsport Park with an action-packed lineup. TA2s, RX8s, production touring, prod sports and Super GT, plus a one-hour HQ Holden Enduro not to be missed.
name's Jared Harbour. I uh, started HQ Racing this year. Uh, a couple of boys, Sean Bolan and Kerbo boys, got me into it. The car's going well. Um, today went really well. Uh, 14th in qualifying. Big thanks to the sponsors too. It's been awesome. Uh, Winston Express, Equity Views and Garland. Um, ma major help. It's awesome. So tomorrow we've got the one hour Enduro. It's uh, my first time with a big race like that. Um, pretty excited. Um, we're going to take the first half pretty easy. You know, make sure the car's right. Get good track, track positions. Um, and then see where we are halfway through and start getting on it a bit. Hopefully we can get some good positions um, and just go from there. G'day, it's Leighton Cranbrook here from the Better Pools Dons Mechanical HQ number six. Just uh, here for the HQ Extra Enduro. The one hour is going to be an awesome race, it's going to be a challenge and you're going to have to be fast from start to finish. Uh, some real quick guys out there and it's going to be a real battle. And here we are rolling out onto the grid for race number one, so Saturday afternoon. A big shout out to Equity Views Construction. So they're our supporters to be able to put this production together. So a big thanks to them. And as we're seeing, there's 22 cars. I think they'll be rolling out onto the grid at the moment. Beautiful weather out there, fantastic day, as you would have experienced yourself there, Dave. It certainly was, mate. It was an absolutely blinder of a weekend. The weather was really, really good. And um, I think um, Command Digital put it on pole for first and second. So um, they done extremely well. They were very, very happy. They were pumped up on it. But also, you got to remember, we had John Baxter back in his car. Um, he's come back in. James Fletch in there as well from MIA um engine rebuilding so um a very good field of 22 cars some blistering times and some fast good close racing yeah look at the front you're right they had two command digital cars there but not the two normal drivers uh jason mole all oh, ended up being able to unable to make it down to the event but it was a bit of action in the first lap yeah, there certainly was, mate. Um, you know, spin, 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 round, 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 whichever way you want to say it. But um, there, there certainly was. There was a couple of cars that got slight panel damage. It wasn't anything major, which was really, really good to um, you know, get the cars back out there for the next race. But, yeah, this one here was certainly, um, yeah, coming through turn one, as you know, mate, um, that left-hand inside wall comes up quickly if you make a mistake. Absolutely, and it's Luke Harrison here that we've got in car at the moment. So I think he's probably got his cranky pants on at the moment because of that uh, turnaround at turn two there. And what you'll probably see is a, a fairly spirited drive sort of coming through here. So he's already coming up to the back of some of the back markers there. And uh, we've got Lynch and might even be Richard Mork uh, in the HU Extra car here. Was, Losing a bit of oil actually, so it was a bit slippery to sort of follow and um, I think it was a bit hard for poor Richard to be able to sort of drive that one at this particular time. So, um, but like we said, there's some pretty hard steering going on here. There's uh, the blue Better Pools and Spars car, which is driven by Wayne Healy potentially at that time. Actually, no, sorry, it'd be Peter Dane because it was where he was actually running in the afternoon. So um, yeah, I think we'll, we'll probably see some pretty hard driving here, mate. We certainly will. Actually, that's Wayne Healy's medical car. He bought that flight in Crowell County a few weeks prior to the event to get another car out there because we've also got two of the HQ Extra cars out there as well in the uh, Massey Ferguson Grey, you could say. So, um, but yeah, it's got some quick times. You can see, um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, by the footage here, they've got the inside car of Luke Harrison. Um, coming down the, the straight, you can finish the, um, the first lap. And um, yeah, that front bundle of cars was certainly absolutely screaming by about lap three or four, they were already down in the one 159. So it goes to show you, it was a perfect weekend. The weather was good and the track handles. So the, the Cranbrook car, ladies and gentlemen, is a dark red car. It's not pink, it's dark red. On this screen, I don't know why it's coming out to almost 
you know, the lovely pink colour, you could say, the number six car. But those two command digital cars, as you said, Dwayne Cambridge is driving one of them. Um, done an absolute ripper time in qualifying and also the first race. It was unbelievable how well these two cars went. And John Baxter was still having a few teething issue problems because he wasn't as fast as what he normally is. So is he a has-been? Well, it was interesting to see, you're right, there was a lot of quick cars there that I'm sure John Baxter would have expected to roll back into some fairly easy upfront running like he's used to. But at this particular time, he was he was lucky to be in the top 10, um, sort of back part of the top 10 anyway. So at the moment, we're, we're following Sean Boland here in the asset plumbing vehicle. He looks like he's just passed the Kerway uh, asphalting car there of, of uh, Harrison. So again, we're, we're going to be seeing a lot of in cars, which is fantastic. So we've, we've got an opportunity here to sort of see the way that the laps sort of fold out, the way that the cornering sort of goes, and even between the two cars that we've sort of seen already, you'll see that there's different ways that the two drivers so far have even been able to hit it through. And I can tell you, it was a pretty hard change into uh, to top gear there by Sean. Yes, it certainly was. That car, I've been told by most of the field, is unbelievable coming out of the corners. It just goes like gangbusters coming out of the corner. It really hooks up well and certainly got a lot of drive. And also now we've got young Jared Harbour there in the 122 car. Um, he took both cars out that weekend. He's just bought a, um, a, a car from a New South Wales competitor and got a bit more sign riding put on it. But it decided to race Old Fateful um this weekend so which wasn't too bad of an idea because as you can see the right hand driver's door and rear door was involved in that that accident at turn one on the first lap but um he's certainly having a bit of fun he's got a bit of opposite lock there um happening but the um equality views construction car is doing extremely well that was jack harrison in the white car we've got luke harrison in the black car and jack harrison in the white car the 57 car you can see there that's mia that's the um fleck driving that and we go right the way back through the field geez that's 77 car didn't it go absolutely unbelievable um in the one hour it was so so quick and he hasn't raced ladies and gentlemen for probably 12 15 months so um barker done a fantastic job and doing a fantastic job here as you can see yeah look um yeah manny barker did an incredible job you're right he he hasn't been driving as much as as some other years and definitely some other guys towards the front so we've got Dwayne that's raced at every round we've got chris mole that's raced at every round we've got layton that's raced at every round so it was a great result so in the end it ended up being chris mole uh, over Dwayne Cambridge, both of the, of the Command Digital signage cars ended up 1-2 there. And um, they're lining up for the second race. So we've got our second of the two drivers. If you're a two-driver team, you, you turned up one in each of the events. But if you're a single driver, go straight into it again, race two, Sunday morning. Certainly is, and away we go. We've had a real good start. We're inside car 73. That's Jack Harrison, like I mentioned to you. Oh, have a look at MHA, Dave Proglio. He's sir, he gave a bit of a, a, a chrome bumper horn, you could almost say there, at Leighton Cranbrook, as I go through turn one. We've got Barker in front of him, and both digital command cars um, are certainly in that tight knit group of five right in front. Race two, Sunday morning. Yeah, so in front of this particular car, we've got the Dwayne Cambridge car. Uh, the command digital driven one at the moment. So race two, lap one, and it's frantic out the front for sure. It's tight between any of those front six or seven cars there at the moment. They're door-to-door they're -to -door and Dave Proglio looks like he's he's got his hands full out there for sure. He certainly is, mate. He's been served up on a plate at the moment. I think someone just tapped him. He had a bit of opposite lock, uh, which you know, and what it's like. Oh, up goes the hand. Thanks, buddy. I'll remember that. Put that one there in the um, in the bank. And um, coming back in, but the 39 car, the MH8 car, beautiful looking car. And certainly, I understand um, Dave was running the old Shane Cox engine. I understand, uh, which has got a HQ Dart head on it, which um, was making some really good power when Shane Cox had it. 
um, in the FLB car um, last year, and he's just put it in, and it must be going all right for him for this weekend as well. As you can see, he's certainly right in a... Have a look at Sean Bowen down the inside. Is that you driving the HQ Extra car, Ian, or is that your co-driver? Uh, no, look, I, I was co-driving with Kieran Pilkington. This particular race was my one, so I was actually driving that. We started at the rear, and uh, we made our way forward until we had a bit of an issue uh, with some overheating. So, um, But, yeah, no, we, we started at the back, but we got about 10 places in about two laps, so it was pretty good fun out there for sure. Overheating car, I'll drive away, you tell me that. It was hot. I and then down the fr- <laughs> yep. As I come down the front straight, we've got Jack Harrison again. Uh, he takes everything like he's just cruising, you could say. Um, a young kid with a heap of experience and all the rest. Um, just, you know, jumps in the car when he has to, works on the car if he has to. Other than that, maybe we'll sit and read a book or, or have a sleep. So um, he works very, very, very hard for um, the Ash Valley crew, for the old man, to make sure the old man's making plenty of moolah. So um, him and Luke can go motor racing on the weekends. And it looks like Sean's gesturing there. I'm not sure if he's saying, pass me or leave me alone. Yeah, I'm not sure. It was a thumb, so it wasn't too bad. Um, now, that's the gentleman, the number nine car there. Um, he got involved because the Harrisons got involved and they live in the same road and there's something like about nine HQs in the one road. So that's um, jury there um, being towed in. Um, I'd say probably a tail shaft problem, but that is readily fixed for the one hour later on this afternoon. So he had a bit of an issue, but with the HQ, we all get together, get it out, get it fixed and get him going again. Now have a look at this. That's CMB engines. I wonder who's in that car. I think it's Bobby Hepburn, isn't it? Uh, race two, probably Glenn Deering at this stage. So with the first race, uh, most of the, the returnees, you could say, most of the classic guys were able to sort of run it at, uh, at race one yep. on, on, on Saturday. And then Sunday, they sort of ended up taking more of the, the prime drivers. But yeah, we're following sort of Sean Bolan, I'm assuming, just from the asset stickers on the back yep. of the car there. But it looks like he's picking a, a, a wheel up, either a front or a rear, you can see the the smoke sort of coming up out of the back. We've got, um, yeah, Glenn, and then it's probably Pedro, and then I think it was probably my car behind him on the on the uh, back of the view there. Oh yeah, it's all about you and your car, isn't it, mate? The HQ Extra car, which is great to see. They're, they're one of the, the major sponsors also, and they also organise a lot of this weekend as well, HQ Extra. Um, the crew and the gang and all the HQ guys get together and help each other and push forward. That's what's so fantastic about New South Wales at the moment. They are really in the sport for themselves. So um, that's Jared Harbour we're in at the moment, the 122 car coming down the front straight. He is absolutely licking his lips. He's full of excitement. His mum and dad absolutely love it. The daughter comes out as well, and also him and his girlfriend. But the most important thing, mate, this is his first year of motorsport. And he said, David, I can't believe how much fun you can have here. And if I get into trouble, mum's only just around the corner. <laughs> now, nah, look, it, it, it is. And, and it's great to sort of see some new people coming through. And, and again, we, we've really got to thank um, Equity Views Constructions there to, to, to come on board and they've actually joined HQ Extra as one of the supporters there as well. So uh, look, HQ Extra couldn't have put the event on and, and isn't able to promote the category as much as we have been able to do without the supporters and, and everyone else in the field. So that looks like the end of race two, which brings us on to the Enduro. So the Enduro is a one hour Enduro, a combined results between these two fields ends up giving us a starting position for the final so um, some of the guys have have maybe had an issue or or dropped back in one of the previous heats and might have sort of lost a little bit of ground Um, but I think you'll find that the the fast guys have sort of stayed up the front Uh, a couple of command digital cars um, were probably even starting off one and two from uh, from memory there Yep, they certainly are as they all come off on turn four, as you can see. This is at Sydney Motorsport Park, ladies and gentlemen, or the old Eastern Creek, which they used to call it. Sydney Motorsport Park, they've certainly spent a lot of money to make this venue looking absolutely A1, which is absolutely brilliant. And um, yes, once again, thank you to all the sponsors for um, coming on board um, through the whole year. And as you can see here, 
Um, it tells us who was running. Car five it was Glenn Deering, mate. You were right for a change. Sean Boland done fairly well. Jack Harrison went back a little bit. Um, it'll be interesting to see what issues and dramas he had with that car. It wasn't sounding good. It's done at least a head gasket or maybe a bit more serious. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens. But have a look at Luke Harrison. He's... Um, Jack Harrison, I've heard there's a bit of a car swapping situation going on. Talk me through it. Why? What's happening? Yeah, me, my main car I've been running is blowing a head gasket just then. Uh, we don't know why. It's, it's been pretty safe with the tune. And it's doing a rear wheel seal too, so instead of working flat out, change it and fix it, just bring a new car out. So you just had another car laying around? Oh, uh, yeah. It's my brother's other car, so he's got it laying around. I'm borrowing it. And your brother is racing as well this weekend, or is he just lending it to you? Yeah, no, he's here too, but yeah, he's got his main car, so he hasn't broken down yet. <laughs> and so that's the car that you'll use for the Enduro? Yeah, yep. yeah, I'll use that for the race, the main race. And an Enduro isn't something that normally HQs do. How do you? How are you feeling about it? Are you excited, mixed feelings? Yeah, I mean, I'm excited for sure. Get the race for an hour, but... Um, It'll test the cars for sure. They're under a lot of load for a long time. And these old girls, so I don't know, it'll be interesting. And you've got a, um, a pit stop that has to happen as well. Have the guys been practising and, and working out how that's going to go? Yeah, I've seen a few practising. I mean, I haven't practised. I'll just do it when it comes, but I'll probably be slow, but should be all right. Thank you. No worries. All good? Yep. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Looks like a bit of work going on here underneath one of the HU Extra cars. I can see from the hat there, it looks like uh, Wayne Healy actually getting his hands dirty for once. Yeah, it looks like they're doing a gearbox change at the moment, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, it's running a banjo diff, so um, very, very soft and loose in the rear of it. You can run the banjo or the Holton Salisbury, but um, the diff ratio has to be 3.55. So this particular car was his uh, original grey car and on this particular event we've got uh, Rob McDougall running it and in the other car, from the colour of the shirt, it looks like Peter Dane was actually topping up some oil there. So they're getting ready to roll out for the final and the HU Extra Cup itself and the start, absolutely fantastic, beautiful weather, the grass was green, it could not have been a better event. Yep, so they are going into turn one. Now, we've got 26 competitors um, here in 21 HQ Holdens. We started with 21 yesterday morning. We've still got 21 on Sunday afternoon. So we've got the one-hour race. Uh, we're in the blue blue car there. So um, is that Wayne Healy or Peter Dane in that? But um, certainly, oh, Glenn Deering. No, it'd be probably Bobby Hepburn. No, and Bobby hanging it out wide going through turns two and three yes bobby that's your it's not smoke it's only dust as we go through up and over there this is a one hour event so um the single car drivers have to get out shut the door and then reopen the door and get back in again and get going again where the the other ones makes common sense one gets out the other one gets in and away they go they, they each have to do a certain minimum time so um this is absolutely brilliant, but look at Barker. Barker's got an absolute blinder of a start. He's in front of um, Leighton Cranbrook, of course, the um, the better better pools cars. You need a pool. That's where you go for up in New South Wales. A lot of people are very, very happy with them. They seem to be always digging holes in the dirt, but they love it. So um, it's the afternoon. You see the sun starting to set. That come down a bit, a bit lower later. And um, we'll certainly get in the um, the eyes of the drivers. 39, Dave Proglio again in the MHA. He's certainly got that camera sitting at a beautiful angle. I don't know about his gauges. That's a bit of an odd odd angle to have both temp and oil pressure gauges, but no, oh, well, whatever floats your boat. Yeah, look, it's looking pretty standard on the dash there with a couple of pods on the side there. But uh, like you said, we're in with Dave Proglio again and uh, it looks like he's having a pretty good run here. He's always been really good at, at Wakefield Park of late. He's been particularly competitive there and, and Eastern Creek sort of seems to be a little bit less competitive and only by a couple of spots, but well within the top five consistently anyway. So he's having a great run here. And like you said, out the front, uh, we've got Leighton and Matty Barker having a, a, a great battle there. And it looks like someone might've been washing wide in, uh, whoop, and he may well be joining him. 
uh, <laughs> let's see how they go into turn one and two, but uh, absolutely brilliant. You've got about six or seven cars there. I don't think that the, the times would reflect anything less than a sprint race lap time, even this early into one hour event. I don't think they're buttoning off at all. Yeah, they certainly are. We'll be able to see as they go through through the one hour what some of the times were and all the rest and who done the quickest laps and what lap and everything else like that. But um, there wasn't one or two cars doing 159s. I reckon there was five, if not six cars doing 159s or even better than high 159s. So it was absolutely, the track was good, the temperature was good, the day was absolutely spot on. And uh, one, two, two, and of course that's Shane Ball on there in the uh, the asset car. Yeah, Jeez, that rocking. car looks very, very nice. Sorry, sorry, mate. That car looks very nice going through turn one. Looking at the back window, not as good as the blue car behind him. Yeah, the blue car behind him runs pretty hard. I'll give you that. But um, you said, it, look, it's a beautiful car to look at. It's absolutely incredible. And even just looking inside Jared's car, there is looks like he's got the crossbar. Um, you don't see it that often. He's actually got the roll cage underneath or along the front of the dash pad there too. So um, not a not a common fixture, but like you said, it, it looked like it was pretty nice going around turn one there in Sean's car, but it looks like it's happening all here at the moment. And again, uh, a lap and a half into a one hour race and they're door to door, they're pushing hard. They're to a certain extent probably trying to work out where they can actually be for when their pit stops come into it and they might have a little bit more control and opportunity to to pit where they want to but out the front two four six eight cars that are almost sort of nose to tail um, pushing absolutely incredibly hard um, some of the the best drivers in the country and the fastest cars a 159 around eastern creek at any point in time is a qualifying time there's some events that we don't even get into a sub two minute lap so to be doing 159s there on a sunday afternoon it's it's pretty incredible yep it certainly is oh uh, this is the shane bowen car again absolutely fantastic to see but um just seeing there going through turn 11 there that's when um leighton cranbrook actually got in front of matty barker so um and started to um break away from the field a little bit but already we're starting to have um pit stops by the looks of it yes we are having pit stops already this will be quite interesting if the camera stays on here you can physically see what a one man does he's out of the car he's getting back in the car getting a bit of a helping hand there to try and get the belts on with the harms device you physically cannot see what's around you at all you just got to feel yourself and um, he's back out into the lane and he's heading back down to go back out again. That was pretty quick there. That looked like around about the 32, 34, four seconds. But I understand Lake and Cranbrook absolutely blew him away when he done his pit stop. Yeah, look. Um, Ian, he, that's where he won the race. It, it, well, look, at this stage, it was definitely the quickest lap, uh, the quickest pit time that we sort of had. And he was assisted quite well from his wife and he was obviously well organised to be able to sort of get it done too. But the advantage in, in a single car, uh, a single driver scenario is that your belt's already pre-tensioned. So um, you're in and out, you're the same position. You can put the, the positioning of the seats and the harnesses where you want them, where two drivers have either got different heights and you're compromising either longer or shorter. Um, or if you've got a different girth, you might end up with one sort of slightly longer um, harnesses than the other. So the advantage to some degree comes into a single car, but the guys that took two car, uh, two drivers in their, their scenarios were there for the enjoyment and, and I was one of them. I, would, I couldn't have been happier being able to enjoy it with the, the other guys that were there. And in my particular case, we had Kieran Pilkington in, enjoying the, the co-drive with me and, and long overdue, so we loved it. Here's more of the pit stops sort of starting to occur and you'll, you'll see these coming through the grid. You certainly will there. That's the 39 car there, the MHA car there, Dave Poglio. He's got to get that big frame out, bum out first, yep. And then he gets out, hands on the on the roof, and then he gets back in again, as you can see. But um, what we've got to remember is we, we were able this round to get Peter Day, Bob Hepburn, Richard Mork, yeah, the legend, Rob McDougall, both one lungs, and also Karen Pinkleton to come back. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's seven drivers that we haven't seen in HQ for many, many years. And this was a fantastic opportunity um, 
one, to help you out, mate, because I know Karen's a fair bit faster than you and he has got bragging rights. But um, but two, just to give these guys a bit of a taste and try and lure back into for next year, because I understand New South Wales has got a, a couple of um, cannons, you could say, up your sleeves of where HQs have got to race, when and where. So stay tuned, HQ competitors, New South Wales, has got a couple of uh, massive meetings and massive race days to tell us about in 2021. Absolutely. Look, the, the roll call of the guys that you just sort of threw out there was absolutely phenomenal. National Championships, Bathurst Championships, racetracks all around, as including state championships too. So the uh, I, I couldn't even work it out between Leighton, um, Johnny Baxter, um, Peter Dane, Kieran Pilkington, they're all national championship winners. You've got state championship winners in the grid there. Sadly, Chris Buckley, um, who was also a state champion um, in the HU Extra team, wasn't able to be there. He had some surgery um, a couple of weeks beforehand, so he wasn't able to, to participate. Um, but within the rest of the field, um, yeah, phenomenal amount of, of enjoyment for everyone that was there. And we're definitely looking forward to 2021. We've got the Hotwood Cup. Uh, returning at Eastern, uh, at uh, Wakefield Park next year. And um, we're always looking forward to a non-COVID year, you could say, hopefully a little bit of normality sort of coming back to it. And uh, the category couldn't be any stronger. I think this year has been a very challenging year for, for, for everyone in so many different ways. And um, we've got to be lucky to, to have our biggest problem that we're not able to get to the racetrack as often as we want. Yep, that's for sure. Now, uh, Bucko had some surgery. Hopefully that was just to tuck his ego back in. And um, hopefully he'll be ready to fire and go as of 2021. So, Bucko, mate, get it snipped, get it clipped, and get back into the HQ race car for 2021. But as you can see, what we've got here at the moment, it's all going extremely well. I saw the one lungs there in the HQ 15. That's the Walker uh, Jackson car there, the Tide Power car of 44. They had a fairly fairly good run, I thought, but John Baxter, um, a little bit off the pace. Um, it'll be interesting to see um, if he comes back in November at Sydney Motorsport Park to see if he can regain a little bit of that momentum that he needs to get for the 2020. 21 season. Um, I understand he might be coming back for a full-time drive next year and hopefully Brett Osborne and the gang, especially Raymond and Osborne's Transport, will also be back um, in 2021. COVID free, COVID fast and enjoying HQ Racing. Absolutely and they're starting to wind the times down now. I can see how low it is light-wise in the afternoon. Out the front we had, like you said, Leighton Cranbrook got a fantastic lead from his pit stop and from the outside, they had Matty Barker just pegging back fractionally every single lap until the last particular lap. The last lap board sort of comes out shortly and we'll see how closely these guys end up sort of crossing the line there. But there was just absolutely amazing from the outside to watch it all happen. It certainly was. Last lap board came out. Now have a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. That's how close it was. That's how close it was, less than a HQ between first and second. Have a look at those times. Point two. Point two, mate, between first and second. Two, so, two. whoa, have a look at this. Oh, winners are grinners, you can see that. So um, he's already got his trophy by the looks of it. Leighton is very, very happy. His wife there is absolutely punched. One by, I would say, probably almost half a car length. Like, it was close. It was really, really good. It was fantastic. Barker was around about oh, eight seconds behind with three laps to go and to come all that way through, all way, almost done a gizzy, you could say. Yeah, look, he, he came from behind for sure. Let's let's leash him to late and have a bit of a chat. Yeah, we um, the HQ Extra Enduro Cup was just absolutely awesome weekend for us. We didn't qualify well. We got up well in first in the first race up to fourth and the next race after that, we won it, and that put us in the box seat for the last race. Um, we were there or thereabouts. We weren't quite fast enough to hold it with the front, but we just stayed on their bumper. And I came in the pits, and my wife did an amazing job. The best pit stop ever, and uh, we come away with a win. Very proud. Can I congratulate every single competitor? There is uh, 21 starters. Uh, only out of 21, only two DNFs. And uh, 
only two, which for HQs is pretty good. So third place, which ironically his fastest lap was lap four, can you believe? <laughs> um, so Kerway Ashfielding, Luke Harrison. <laughs> Congratulations, mate. Well done. Second place, Osborne Transport, car 77, Matty Barker. Yeah. <laughs> well done, mate. Congratulations. Well done. Well done, mate. Good on you. No worries at all. So, Buck, there can only be one winner. And, uh,. This guy has been on it all weekend, doing all the right ways and doing all the right things. And uh, he's driven very, very well. Car six, better pools and spas, Leighton Cranbrook. <laughs> on behalf of HQ Extra, thank you very much for all the weekend. Thank you very much for all the sponsors. Keep watching our show, keep enjoying, keep racing, and let's uh, make H shoes great again. If it ain't pinging, it's beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. So it was great to see everyone there. Um, look, we'll, uh, we'll we'll put that down as one of the better events that I've been able to sort of be involved in, and, and uh, we had a great time. And I hope you did too, Dave. And again, thank you for all the supporters and sponsors. Um, and thank you, Dave, for your time and being able to get up there and help us out as much as you do too. Ian, that's never an issue or a problem. You know, if there's a HQ race, mate, I'll get to there. I'll get there fairly and correctly and make sure I do the right thing. But um, congratulations, Leighton Cranbrook for first, Matty Barker for second, Luke Harrison for third. Luke Harrison had engine issues for the last three laps but um, was able to still hold it together and all that. So um, from me, I love HQ Racings. Well, I've never, ever heard HQ Racing, and I will always make sure I do everything spot on, just like HQ Extra and what you've done, Ian, absolutely brilliant. And didn't Hollywood certainly fill the screen up right at the end of the interview? Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thank you. This is David Amor. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.